Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, a.k.a. Jires Rogue, um, Jires in the Jungle, whatever you want to call me. It is actually Monday, the 29th um, of 2018, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much for tuning in again, friendly listener. Another week of rambles and nonsense, you know, I'm just chocked full of just to spill out to you guys. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Another round of applause for yourself, like always, man. You know what I'm saying? You guys, hey, if you really do enjoy quality content, you're getting your fill right here at the Rambling Rogue Show. So I appreciate you. You could go and get that fill anywhere else. You could have you could have went and got uh, and found yourself some other urban podcast or I don't know if you'd call this an urban podcast. Would you call this an urban? Yeah, you you could have went and, and found yourself some other urban podcast or some some shit like that. But no, you're here, enjoying the Rambling Rogue show. So um, you know I mean I've got a few things to ramble about today, so it's not quite. It's gonna be a ramble, but we have a few topics that we just want to first you know just lightly cover. You know what I mean? But first. Before we even get into it, to be honest with you, listener, um, if I could just pull this up real fast, I got to do a shameless plug, a shameless plug. I really don't even care how the hell this makes me look. It's just I got to let y'all know what's going on with me. And um, so I guess this will be like the first piece of the show. I put out some new music. Okay, new music. But it wasn't the Linda EP that I was working on that I've been letting you guys know about. Um. I'm not sure if I actually spoke about this last week, so I'm just going over it now. But, yeah! Silly Song Volume 3, you know what I'm saying? Three fresh new tracks from Jairus Rogue that y'all could go enjoy right now. We got the VB mating call, we got Control, and then we got the song called Uma. So pretty much just three new songs by your boy, you know what I'm saying? I'm just putting these out just so I can kind of give you guys something to just hold over until... More music comes, more serious music comes, and um, it's pretty much just filling music for me to just kind of have out, you know, so that I don't have no new music out, you know what I'm saying? So, let me play y'all a little so- let me play y'all a little so so with that. That's enough of that. Anyway, (laughs) Um. (coughs) excuse me, coming down with quite a cough. That was the song Control. I'm not going to play too much more of that. I I, I don't think you guys, um, I don't want to force that on you guys. But um, yeah, Silly Songs Volume 3, you know what I'm saying? Go check that out if you're kind of interested by that first like what 20 seconds that i played of that song control each song was produced by producers that you know either i've met or you know like i have a connection with them so let me just say one good thank you one real thank you to my producers you know what i'm saying thank you to the Gotti. thank you to 10 figure as he's trying to be called now and thank you of course to baby barf um while these are not my only producers like what, and what I mean is, while they're not the only producers that I would get beats from, these dudes are definitely people that, like, I'll be consistent with when I'm just trying to go look for beats and stuff like that. I'll shop my music around with them before I even put it out. Like, I kind of have a little circle going on with these the, these guys. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, they, they basically keep it so that my music is checked and is, you know, uh, has other eyes on it that, that actually have a, that bring a new perspective, a new opinion to my shit. You know what I'm saying? Rather than just having me just editing, sitting there, just trying to do it all by myself. It, it's nah. But um, shout out to my producers, Silly Songs Volume 3, Jai's Rogue. New Jai's Rogue music. So <clears throat> this week, it's been a pretty good week, you know, it's been a pretty good week. I actually started my first week of uh actual work at FedEx. We went to a uh, metal show. 
a local metal show, and by metal I mean like like you know like 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 black metal, you know, punk rock, you know, type of shit. We went to one of those, and then um, pretty much, you know, we're just feeling bright about the future. So let's get into it. We're we've started our first week at FedEx, right? So honestly, I I got to do this little round of applause for myself because I'm not even gonna lie. That shit was kind of difficult. You know, it was a lot of heavy lifting. I'm a package handler over there. And, uh, you know, the work I'm doing, while it's not like, you know, some fucking rocket science. And it's also not the most, I think, intense thing in the world. Most definitely not. Um, it is trying. It does make you sweat. And it'll it'll really have you consider kind of kind of just what you're doing with yourself in that moment. Because it's, 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 uh, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? So... Finished my first real week of work, and at Friday, because you actually have to work a full week, so I worked five days. Um, on Friday, I felt great, man. I felt freaking great. I was lifting for the whole week, essentially, because the work that they have me moving, like I said, it's lifting. It's hard. And I'll be lifting boxes of up and up to and over, you know, like 50 pounds and up, right? So it'll be like 60-pound boxes, 70-pound boxes. You'll have some 100-pound boxes that you have to lift with others that sometimes you don't get to lift with others. You got to lift by yourself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, again, not trying to brag, not trying to do any of that, not trying to say my life is so hard or anything like that, but I'm just saying, um, you know, I got through it. And uh, to be honest, this one actually kind of surprised me. I actually really enjoyed myself, really started to enjoy myself last week. Um, I don't know if it's just like a new situation and because of me being in that new situation, I'm just kind of, you know, having these like, I guess you could say like a uh, uh, kind of a. Uh, like a, a beginner's excitement or something like that, but who knows, man, you know, my manager is a stand-up guy, the people that I work around are all, they all try to be, um, at least on a base level, like, like, reachable, and then at the most, it'll be like, everybody else is just like, sociable as fuck, and they're always trying to talk to you, and not just talk to you, but get into your interests and shit like that, and like, that can be a bit much sometimes, but I think I like it, though, especially with the work environment that we all got to work in because it's like it's just heavy machinery, no phones, no electronics, no nothing. There's no TV, you know, and then you're working for three hours straight. And oftentimes you'll be working with other people side by side. So it's like you kind of got to be sociable just to make the, the time go. And um, I got to say, like, I, I'm just enjoying myself. The lifting gets me feeling great. I'm drinking so much water. Like, okay, I I was drinking water quite a bit before I started my job. Um, because if you guys didn't know, which I don't think you guys do know, uh, I don't think I shared this on the podcast. For quite some time now, I've been kind of experimenting and, and I've been tiptoeing into getting into an alkaline diet. Now, I was put onto this by the um, late Dr. Sebi and his teachings and the teachings that still continue on if you actually just look it up on anywhere in the internet, really. But um, an alkaline diet is essentially a diet um, made up of foods and, uh, and mostly water where you're eating these foods that are naturally coming from the earth, that have color to them, and that have benefits that would flush you out for the most part. That's That's pretty much what it is. So you got, you know, mainly vegetables, um, you're going to do, I think, I don't even think you're going to do much meat, if, if, if at all, um, you've got to get nuts and, and, and different things like that in you, um, but essentially, Dr. Sabian is alkaline diet, I've been trying to tiptoe into it, and one of the things that I've been trying to do to, t- to kind of get into it was drink, um, these, like, what I call them, kale concoctions, right, so basically, I'll mix up, um, one very alkaline, uh, I guess ingredient, so that's kale, you know, because it flushes you out, it keeps your body very clean, very pure inside, and it also gives you lots of energy. It just boosts you up in, in general, right? You got your kale because it's so bitter, and then you got your, you've got your kale, and then I mix it with like some watermelon and whatnot, and I just dump water in there, make my smoothie, and I'm good. So for months now, I've, I'll say that I've been doing this. I've been pretty much drinking water at like a higher level than than part like like the rest of my life like before because i'm 19 now before i turned 19 
I'll admit this. I probably would go days without drinking. Like, around 17 years old, I would go days without drinking water. Like, literally. If I did drink a little bit of water, I would probably drink, like, so much so that I wasn't thirsty. Like, I would drink it so that I wasn't thirsty in that moment. And then I would just go back to drinking juice, milk, you know, just just nonsense, pretty much. Just not water. Soda, ugh, just not water, right? And, um, yeah, it was around when I turned 19. I just... It just switched off of me. It just clicked. 18-ish, like late 18, 19. Um, that yeah, I should start drinking more water. Should tr try getting the you know more healthy shit inside of me. Not necessarily I gotta work out. Not necessarily I gotta be yoked. Not necessarily I gotta be you know all that. But at least I don't want to be sweating every time you know the sun it reaches past like 80 degrees out here. You know what I'm saying? It's embarrassing as hell when you're like, cause cause here's how I was before it's embarrassing as hell when you're like this in the middle kind of guy where you're not fat right but you're also not skinny and you're tall too so you're just big you know it's just it's just not nah like for me that was just very uncomfortable and that's how i spent a lot of time in high school so ugh, went on a huge tangent there there but that's the rambling rogue show you know what i'm saying it is sorry this soundboard is trash that's the rambling rogue show it is God damn it. Hold on. It's ramble time. There you go. It's ramble time. And that's how y'all, you know, that's that's how we get down over here on the Rambler Rogue Show. So basically, I've been drinking water for a minute. And when I started to actually get my training for this new job that I'm at, FedEx, right? So let's bring it back. Um, when I started working at this job at the orientation, they actually told me that you should really be drinking water before you actually come in for your shift. And I started internalizing not just that, but a lot of other different little things they've been telling us, like, as new hires, so that, like, our job is smoother. And I've internalized these things, you know, like squatting and, like, you know, lifting things on opposite sides. And, man, it has made the work experience so that it's, honestly, it just feels smooth. Like, I'll just walk in, get my pump on, as Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia would say. And um, I walk out. I'm there for about four-ish hours, and I'm out. And I'm making my factory paycheck, and I'm working factory hours, Monday through Friday. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the best, but it's decent. And um, I'm very much enjoying it. So pretty much FedEx first week has been pretty good. One thing I will say is this. Okay, last week I kind of brought this up, and it continues on. Damn it, it continues on. And I have an anecdote. I knew it, listener. I knew it. When you get into a situation when there's adults around you, okay, and you're, especially if you're just, um, if you have a situation where it's one, like a, a, a large majority of one sex to the other versus like a, an even balance, I think that, especially when it's males, I think that, man, the environment becomes a much more how i'll say it mm, sexualized it does okay and it makes me uncomfortable i'll just say it. it makes me fucking uncomfortable maybe i need more time you know i'm 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 a man child listener i consider myself a man child i consider myself the type of person that just um refuses to grow up by any means that refuses to just um to to, to i guess subside to that standard and I guess I'm just immature. Maybe, you know, I'm just immature. But damn it. My manager can't come up to me talking about, and is this niche? Oh, oh, okay, fuck it if it's niching. Nobody listens to my podcast anyway, so if this shit blows up because it's niching, fuck it. I don't even care. But my nigga, my, how can my manager really come up to me, right, a new hire, and tell me, right, in 2018, after all the bullshit that we've been going through, all the shit that we've been hearing, scandals, this, that, you think niggas gonna change? How my manager gonna come up to me talking about, you know, Nate, we've got something here called the FedEx rule. You know what that is? <laughs> and then I was like, nah, 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 big dog. What, what's that? What's, what's the FedEx rule, big dog? And then big dog, you know what he gonna tell me? Cause, cause like I'm packing boxes and whatnot. And he's kind of just giving me a little lecture, you know, just, just in, in observing me. You know what he's gonna tell me, big dog? Big dog gonna tell me that the FedEx rule 
is a rule where any chick you see outside of FedEx that would most likely be a quote unquote six on a scale of <coughs> un momento. Still battling a cough. Oh God, sorry about that, listener. Anyway, my manager gonna tell me that the FedEx rule is a rule where any girl that you see outside of FedEx that's usually like a six on a scale where you're judging their beauty, right? I'm assuming because that's what he was talking about. I definitely took no part inside of this conversation except for nodding, smiling, and laughing as, as, as an employee is supposed to do. Um, <laughs> the dog gonna tell me that any chick you see on this very superficial scale that judges only beauty and outside appearance. He said, any chick that's, that's a six right there, she's an eight in here. I said, what? <laughs> this dude was telling me that you gonna come out of here, you gonna be starting to get yoked. He said, man, you're gonna start getting harassed, this, that, like, you, you gonna start getting looks and you gonna have to do this. Oh, he was just explaining all kinds of stuff. And man, again, if this is snitching, I don't care because to be honest, nobody even listens to my podcast and the few people that do, I fuck with you anyway, so I don't even care, but it just made me uncomfortable. I mean, he basically just laid out that like this job and he said some more shit. He basically laid out that this job, I mean, it was just, it was just easy pickings for, for, (laughs) oh my God. And then he was just going on to say. Oh, I hope this ain't snitching, my nigga. I hope this ain't snitching. I hope this ain't snitching. If this shit, if this shit actually comes out one day and this shit fucks over somebody's life, my dog, that would be so fucked up. But I, I don't think that would happen, and I don't. That's not my intention. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying not to say names. I don't even think that would matter. But um, this shit hilarious, my dog. So basically, homie goes on to say. He goes on to say that uh. Yeah, these girls be getting their ass up in here, basically. Basically. Like, he said that they come in here and FedEx treats them, or FedEx is their Dr. Miami. He said that these girls come in here no ass, flat, looking like goddamn plank, the goddamn piece of wood. And then they come out looking like ants. That's what he told me. And I was like, nigga, you wild. You wild as hell. And this dude just did not care. So salute to my manager. Shit made me uncomfortable as shit. I had to share that right here. Um, I work there now. So hope I just really do not want this to come and bite me in the ass one day. It's just I had to tell this anecdote. That shit was ridiculous. And it made me feel crazy. But besides that though, all in all, work at uh, 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 the new job is feeling good. FedEx is feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Um, It is a little strict. You know, they, they have these weird-ass rules and stipulations and shit, you know, with the bud and all that. But fuck them. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, like we're going to still keep doing what we're doing. And, um, yeah, we're going to work hard. We're definitely going to work hard over there. You know what I'm saying? Because, and I haven't put this out yet. And I, and I promise when I feel ready, I will. But the way we lost our last job has enlightened us so that, Going into these situations in the future, we won't fuck around like that no more. You know what I'm saying? And um, pretty much, yeah, we're enjoying it. It's pretty good. And that's all. So <laughs> let's move on. What else we got today? Oh, yeah. Okay. So last thing, we went to a metal show, a local metal show. Um, So I live in California, right? SoCal, and out here, uh, you know, we've got, we've got quite the, uh, Latino population, so, I love when people say black is not a monolith, but, you know, no race is, and, and, um, you know, you'll see people from all shapes, sizes, and different colors rock out to different, you know, music that you just wouldn't expect them to, at least, at least for me, um, it's a little eye-opening when I see things like that, but, yeah, no, uh, homie and I went to a local metal show out here that a actually local 
uh, I guess you could say, uh, concert, um, I don't even know what you would call them, like a concert uh, promoter um, put on. They're called Rad Punks, so salute to Rad Punks for putting on that great-ass show. That show and the show we happened to go to last week. Um, yeah, we went to a metal show, and we had a good time. We listened to some weird-ass music made by 20-somethings that are passionate as fuck about, uh, you know, just dark themes and screaming. We were chilling, toking on pens and shit, just cooling, doing our thing. It was a pretty good fucking time. I'm not going to lie. Uh, one great thing, a couple great things actually did happen, though. We actually got into the pit. We started to mosh a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We uh, we started to do our thing there. You know, it was a metal show. It was a little lit. It was a little wild. But, you know, we still had a fun time. And I always, I always want to encourage people, like, whenever y'all get invited to just something a little different – Something that just gets you out of your, your comfort zone. Take that opportunity, man. Like, seriously, comfort is probably one of the things that will mislead you the most in this life. And I really feel like once you break out of it, that's when you actually see, start to see your strides, like, personally. You know what I mean? So we went out to a, to a metal show. Didn't know what to expect. And uh, my homie and I, actually, fuck my homie, Free Mike Demon and I, uh, actually, you know what I'm saying, ended up. You know, just showing our faces and having a good time with, without too much nonsense going on, you know? Uh, I'll say this. I still hate drunk motherfuckers, though. I, I, hate, I hate drinking. I'm 19 years old, and I was always told that, like, once you start to get a little bit older, you're going to, like, change your mind on drinking and shit. And I still hate drinking, bruh. I still hate it, bruh. Like, like, it's so gross. It's so fucking gross, and it makes you look gross as shit. Like, you really do just look like kind of silly when you get drunk but uh and so many people get drunk at these things you know like these backyard shows type shit it's like like oh my god like i know i get it it's cheap it's legal and it makes everybody feel good and it's cool for parties i get it I, actually that's a great point but damn it man it just makes people fucking annoying like honestly you know somebody gets a little bit like tipsy you know, you know those tipsy people that just, like, start to talk too much? You know, they'll get, like, a little bit too much liquor in them, and then they just have to talk about everything to everybody. They have to be in everybody conversation. They got to be the funniest guy around. They got to do this. I hate niggas like that because you could tell they, like, off something, but, like, they just keep trying to inject. Like, I hate that shit. Really is annoying. Um, but, yeah, besides that, Metal Show was a pretty good fucking time. We ended up moshing a little bit, running around, jumping on random people and shit, fucking, you know, swaying back and forth and shit. And we even ended up, I don't know what I would title it. Again, she doesn't listen to my podcast. Nobody really does. But for the people that do, I fuck with y'all. So I'm actually just going a little bit uncut here. Um, We ended up meeting some thoughts. And uh, honestly, hey, salute, salute, salute to Rad Punks once again for putting on such a good show. It made it so that that whole event, the whole scene was kind of lit. It was very much easy for Free Mike Demon and I to kind of just slip in and just get comfortable. So we met a couple thoughts, and um, we thought that we was going, you know what I'm saying, have adventures with these thoughts. And that's actually why I kind of postponed this episode, so now it's the 29th. This episode is technically late because it was supposed to be recorded yesterday on the 28th. You know what I'm saying? And, um, of course, it wasn't. Because I thought that I was going to be making those moves with, you know, the chick that we met at the party. But it just didn't work out like that. But the chick did end up getting our Instagram. She did end up, you know what I'm saying, messaging many times on your boy. And, um, you know, still a 19-year-old virgin. Still don't know how to act when, when, when I get any of that kind of attention. So, you know, little old me, I'm resorting to, to <laughs> basically making my boy, my demon, my fucking coach for a little bit. And I had him coach me through, because he, cause he's kind of, uh, I guess you could say, experienced when it comes to these thoughts around here, especially these local thoughts. And, um, you know, my dog, you know what I'm saying? He, he dished me that good advice. He dished me that shit to say. You know, and I was kind of improvising a little bit. So fast forward to today, we're still messaging. I don't really know where the fuck it's going. I'm just kind of trying to keep it as light as possible, because one of my biggest problems, listener, in the past, with talking to women or females or just anything like that, 
When I get excited, I get impatient, and I just start to say things that you should only say in the moment. And honestly, I just, like, it's so hard for me to decipher that through text. If I'm talking to you face-to-face, -face, it's easy as fuck. Like, if we talk every day, it's, it's easy as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Conversations, much better when we met. It was a, it was just decent conversations, decent little back and forth. Just, you know, having a little funny, funny, you know what I'm saying, shit. She was drunk as fuck. She was drunk. And she even ended up peer pressing Rogi a little bit. Not gonna lie. Kind of sad. She did end up. Yes. What? I'm sorry. Yes. What? Peer pressing Rogi, Rogi into a little, a swig. I took a swig of a Modelo. You know what I'm saying? But what, what was I supposed to do? She was she kept throwing it in my face. And then I had actually ended up passing it off to my boy. So he could drink the whole shit so that we wouldn't look like lames. And, um, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? It was just shit that we had to do in the night. But, um, yeah, so we still talking or whatever. I'm not really holding much to it. I don't think, I mean, I don't know what's up with this chick. She keeps complimenting your boy. And, again, that's very unusual. But she keeps complimenting your boy and it's like, Okay, that's cool, but then whenever a nigga try to like, you know what I'm saying, get moves going, maybe I'm impatient, whatever, I don't know, but who knows. That's what happened this weekend, though. I, I was hoping I would have had a much more exciting, and honestly, you know, uh, a little a little bit more of a uh, sexual story for you guys, but, you know, it just, it just didn't, it, the, the, the cookie did not crumble like that it just it didn't go down like that and um but here we are we're not mad about it we're not sad about it we're not angry about it and by the way we use thought as a term um not to bring anybody down not to to demean anyone but just to describe right like a person that is honestly let's let's just be 1000 looks really great but at the same time is just you know not quite out here trying to trying to like like put out their intellectual vibes and shit they not out here trying to convince you that you know what i'm saying they they do not no they 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 push their their beauty to the forefront and um not to say that all women that do that are thought but the women that do that and also go out and drink heavily like not every day not saying that she does and not saying she's alcohol and none of that but the women that do that and then they go out to drink heavily and then they just around dudes and they're used to male nature. Yeah, we call them thoughts just because of the way they act. You know what I'm saying? They used to the way males are. Not to say that this is some kind of, again, you know, like she's a whore or this or that. No, she's just a girl that's, at least in my definition, that's a female that's very much used to male attention, very much used to, you know what I'm saying, male energy and incites that. Like they want it. So it's like, yeah, you, it's it's a it's a two way thing, but um, salute to that person, and salute to you, listener, for for again tuning in. You know, it's the Rambling Rogue Show. You've listened to me ramble for over twenty eight minutes now, so it's like, you know, pretty much I've gotten quite a bit off my chest, and, and you've been here. So again, I, I one more round of applause for you. You guys are fucking great. You're fucking great. Anything else you want to ramble about this week? New music. Oh my god, dude. Day fucking Tona. Before we even get into that Drake shit. I cuz you need to give this nigga push a second. Um not the biggest Busha T fan in the world. I'm not. But uh Daytona, Pusha T, good music. You know what I'm saying? Kanye West's record label if you don't know. And um you know, he just put out a record that honestly I think one of my homies just said it. It's just the most realist rap of 2018, pretty much. It's just the most just trail, just, you know what I'm saying? Just, just mm, grimy, just, just, oh my goodness. Whole record just has beats that are just completely infectious, that are, you know, just so soulful, that are just so, ugh. You know, it just gives you that look on your face, like, ugh, like it's disgust, but you know you actually, you, it's a look that you get something that you just didn't expect, like, you like, ugh, like, oh my god, like, mm, like, you just, every beat gets your head knocking, Pusha T outdid itself, only seven songs, and Kanye, he got about, what, five more albums to go, six more albums, no, five more albums to go with seven songs, um, he produced the, the hell out of that album, Daytona, King Push, fucking great shit, honestly. And, um, great albums. 
you know? They usually do have huge moments on them. And Daytona by Pushy T is no exception. And on it, the last song on it, you know, that, that infrared, you know, Pushy T, as you guys have all heard at this point, you know what I'm saying? You guys have all been through all the videos and all that shit, so I ain't even gonna get to it, but that infrared on it, he was spitting facts. That infrared. It was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin. It was facts. But uh, as good as that album was, as as uh, as factual as that song was, this man Drake, this man Drake, man. What do you, at this point, he's pretty much the LeBron of rap. And to watch him at this time, to watch, I guess, his traje- tra- trajectory, to watch, you know what I'm saying, this kind of, platform he's put himself on where niggas really really uh at least like musically can't fuck with him you know you're looking at it going and it's like yeah this is literally the greatest of all time um damn it man the duppy doopy freestyle you could get into it so many different ways but i'm gonna just give it to y'all generally if you haven't fucking heard it i don't know how you haven't heard it um you've, you've been literally living under a rock and um Pretty much, if you have heard it, basically what you heard was some of the best rap, you know, of this decade, if we're being 1,000%. And not only some of the best rap of this decade, just because it's, it's, a, it's a freestyle, or not a freestyle, just because it's a, you know, it's Drake and it's, and, it's, and it's a big song, but just because of the fact that the nigga responded to a reference of him within 72 hours. The nigga responded to the reference to... Him within 72 hours with another hit. The nigga responded to a reference to him within 72 hours with another hit that is supposed to be a fucking freestyle. The nigga responded to a fucking hit within 72 hours that's supposed to be a freestyle, right? And on top of that, he didn't even say anything in the freestyle. He's basically just fooling everyone into thinking that he's made some grand gesture. He said some grand shit. He's exposed people. When, if you really look at the lyrics of Duppy, no, most of what Drake says is actually just common knowledge. Shit that fans and people in touch with music already know. But because it's respun by Drake, because of his, his, his just way to just say it, to dish it, that rhetoric, man, the way it comes from him, the boy, it, it, it just, it gives it this new light. I'll give you a perfect example. Is that a girl tour or your world's tour? Or, or is that a world tour or your girl's tour? That's how it went. That's a great line, right? That's a, that's a, oh, oh, girl tour, world tour, oh. But wait, in reality, though, Meek Mill was going on a fucking world tour. How many rappers from Philadelphia like that are popping right now can you say are going on a world tour? Not just America, not just Europe, not just a world tour. Not many. Any? Can you say any, actually? I would contend probably not. Except for Philly. I mean, except for Uzi, right? And Uzi's coming up now, and he ain't even, like, repping Philly like that. Like, he's a Philly nigga, but let's let's be 1,000%. Lil Uzi Vert makes music that sounds like it's from Atlanta, that sounds like it could be, you know, I mean, some of this new New York trap shit. And it's like, yes, that is the tri-state area, but it's like, it's not like he's the biggest rapper of Philly. Not like Meek Mill. So what I'm saying is this girl tour, world tour, world tour, girl tour. That's not a bad thing that you're on a fucking world tour. Selling out hundreds of thousands of tickets? No! But because of the way this man said it, it's got you all hot and bothered. It's got you literally looking at shit differently. It's got everybody else looking at you differently. Father had to stretch his hands out and get it from me. I popped style for 30 hours and let it repeat. Those are just great songs that he just made reference to. Except for maybe pop style, right? But 30 hours and Father Stretch My Hands, those are great songs. Those are just great songs. And great songs oftentimes are not made, not even oftentimes, most times are not made without collaboration. Most great songs, I would contend, are made with collaboration of some sort. 
That's just a fact. Like, for real. The way music is made, it's not made so that, oh yeah, one guy is just sitting there as, as at the canvas just painting away the masterpiece. And then it's just, no, no, it doesn't come like that. Just because there's one name at the very, like, end of it, don't mean to go like that. No. There's a whole team of people that goes into making big songs. 30 hours? 30 hours. Oh, man. The fucking, like, extra instrumental version that nigga put on SoundCloud. The fucking Andre 3 Stacks version. The, just, uh, that beat. The, the smoothest of his flow. That whole song is just lit. It's so honest. It's so true. It's just so lit. It's just beautiful. Father Stretch My Hands is one of the best songs of, uh, what was that, 2016. Again, Drake is one of the best musicians. And music is not made by some artist at the canvas sitting there by himself. So, when Drake then now comes in this duppy freestyle to say, Father had to stretch his hands out to get it from me, pop style 30 hours, etc., etc., I'm like, well, Drake, yes, clever line. You know, wordplay is up to here. You're referencing things. And, and yes, I... I guess you're bringing up this hypocrisy, but again, it's not like you're exposing anyone. It's not like you're coming out to say anything that's that's like, you know, groundbreaking. But because it's Drake, it'll sound and feel groundbreaking. And I think that's something we've got to know. It's amazing his effect on 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 words and and things that you say. He even brings it up a little bit with the QM reference. You know, he's talking about how, you know, people always want to chalk up Q Quentin Miller like he's the one who made the boy. And, you know, he's like, I was trying to help the guy, this, that. When he gets into that, we do have to kind of actually think about how Drake really, he really is very talented and, and how it really is him that's actually making the music that we've all enjoyed as great as it is. Because, and this has been said before. It's not by just me, but it's been said before. I mean, come on. If we had somebody else sing Hotline Bling, would that have really jumped as, as high as it did? If we had somebody else singing, That's how long we're getting home. Oh, man. I mean, maybe it would have been done nice, but would have been like, you know, hip-hop and pop culture transcending? Who can say? Drake is the only one who's been able to do things like this in our time, you know, this past, like, let's say 10 years, on this level for so long. And and, and you're looking at it going, you've got to give him credit. You just do. I mean, I know people dick write him. I know people, they just, they, they just, they, they, they just forget all sense when they bring him up. But, I mean... He really is the star that makes the, the content quality. So, with that said, I mean, god damn it. And I don't think Pusha T is going to respond. Because it's already the 29th. So, um, niggas were saying that he had like a day clock. And then they were saying that he had like a three day clock. I think people just want this beef to go on. But Push himself in the Breakfast Club interview, he already said that if Drake comes back with smoke, he ain't even returning with it. So what I assume he's gonna do is honestly just let this ride out, and I bet you, on his next major release, he'll have another bar for it. But does Pusha T really want to go on a back and forth with Drake? I don't know. Now what he could also do is have a late response. You see, with a late response, he could do something like where Joe Budden did. He could drop like three songs, but drop it way out of his like out of the clock. So that maybe, you know, he can make the kind of line, the little bravado of saying, yeah, nigga, I don't got to respond when you want me to respond. I'm going to respond whatever the fuck I want to respond. Because it, like he said in Infrared, he said everybody know what they was waiting for or whatever. He was like, it's push. You know, he was basically saying that everybody was waiting for push to respond. So, yeah, he could do that too. But I don't foresee that. Um, it's already been, what is it, like three days since that shit came out? And to be honest, at this point, it's like, yeah, he, he could respond. I just don't see that ever, ever winning public uh, opinion. I don't see any song by Pusha T doing any better than Duppy. Um, I don't know how high Duppy charted, because I'm sure it charted. But I don't know how high it charted. But it's like, come on, man. You can't really defeat this nigga Drake. When he makes a hit song and it's a motherfucking, like, like, diss at you, 
there's really not much you can do. He's really put you into this really terrible situation. And um, it's honestly just one of the greatest things to watch. That's why I got to compare him again to LeBron. You look at LeBron on the stage. I mean, God damn it. How can one grown man, and I don't even watch basketball like that, so please don't kill me if I sound ignorant. But how can one grown man carry these other four grown men to, this, to these finals, right? To the very pinnacle of basketball. How can that one grown man do it? What does that tell you about him? It tells you that if he had a, a, had a full squad of niggas that played like him, it would, it would be unstoppable. So it's like watching LeBron and watching Drake is very similar. You literally looking at the GOAT. It's like, there may have been niggas before him that's better, or that I guess you you could you could make an argument for, but if our time, that's the greatest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um We've gone through our music. We've gone through Doc, FedEx. Yeah. See you guys next week, I guess. Surrounding Roadshow.